Hey guys, welcome back to the Maximilian channel and in today's clip I'm going to be taking you through how I implemented Pareto's law slash the 80-20 principle to improve my trading and really increase my risk reward ratios and profits long term. In this video I'm going to break down what the principle is, why I decided to implement it and then I'll break down into stages how I managed to implement it into my trading and hopefully break it down to a point where you can implement this too. I'll run through some of the key results that I managed to get from it and I'll also suggest some resources that I feel could be useful if you're looking to try and implement the same thing. So this video could be particularly useful for people that feel that they've reached some sort of plateau in their trading as things stand and you're really struggling to get to that next level in terms of monthly returns or yearly returns. So stay tuned and I hope you can get some value from this. Now this video is actually episode number two in a video mini series that I'm creating called Finding Your Trading Edge. So if you didn't catch the first episode, I'm going to link it up here so you can go back and take a look at that after. In short, this video series is intended for me to be able to break down some key components that I feel has really allowed me to find my trading edge or at least implement things that I feel have allowed me to become a more sustainable and profitable trader. So I'm going to jump straight in as always, but if you are enjoying the content on this channel, guys, please, I'd really appreciate it if you could just tap that likes up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you've got the alerts turned on so you don't miss when I post my next video. Okay, so first of all, let's get the elephant out of the room. And for those that are unfamiliar, let's quickly, quickly run through what is Pareto's law, or as it's better known, the 80-20 principle. Now, officially, the Pareto principle states that for many outcomes, roughly 80% of consequences come from 20% of causes. Other names of this principle are the 80-20 rule, the law of vital few, or the principle of factor sparsity. But if you put all that jargon aside and just keep it quite simple, essentially it's saying that 80% of your results in most walks of life come from 20% of your efforts. So to give an example in the real world, if you are in sales, for example, it's the premise that 80% of your revenue actually comes from 20% of your customers. Or if you factored in all of the working time in your week, it's actually that 80% of your tangible results tend to come from around 20% of your actual working hours. It essentially summarizes that in a lot of cases, we can be spending a lot of our time on the things that aren't necessarily generating the biggest results. So why why did I implement this into my trading? Simply put, I believe in the principle. I do believe that between procrastination, lack of motivation, or keeping the parameters too wide and focusing on too many things at once, it often did mean that 80% of my results came from 20% of my efforts. So when I thought more into it, I wanted to see if this was reflected in the way that I was trading slash what I was spending most of my time focusing on. My rationale was to see that if it actually turned out that 80% of my results were coming from 20% of my efforts, then if that was the case, how could I refine or get rid of the other 80% that was only generating very small results? Ideally then replacing that with all the stuff that was generating the big results. In essence, I was then hoping that I could create almost my own 80-20 balance but on steroids. For me I think everybody's guilty to it to a point but for me for sure is that when you're going about your day-to-day -day business you often ignore the intricacies or some of the points where your ego takes over where you don't want to limit your options to make money. But as we all know the cliche that isn't really a cliche is that sometimes less is more. And so this brings me on nicely to how did I implement it and what stages did I go through to get the necessary result. And of course the stages that I feel that you can take if you wanted to try and implement this into your trading as well. Okay, so number one is gather the data. First off, I trolled through my personal journal to try and pick up some key facts, like what my win rates were or what my balance between long and shorts was, which instruments in particular that I made the most money on and also which direction did I make the most money on, so be it a long position or a short position. And I even went down in this example to the day of the week in which I was trading just to see if there was any positive correlation between trading on a certain day and achieving a certain profit or loss. Now there is no real limit of the amount of depth that you can go into with this, but for me the key things I wanted to find out was what was making me the most money, what was making me the least money and how much time I was allocating to each of those bits. Now, of course, probably needless to say, but you do need a significant amount of data to do this. So just one quarter or a few weeks isn't gonna be enough. So whether it's back testing or live journaling or forward testing or whatever it is that you're doing, I suggest you would need at least one whole fiscal year of trading data that you can actually go through. This accounts for you having experienced all the seasonalities within at least one year that you can actually determine if something is working or if it isn't for you. Ideally, of course, the data would extend far beyond this, but I would say as a minimum, you want at least a year. Now, if you don't have your own personal journal that you've created yourself there are a huge amount of third-party journals out there that you can log into online you can put your investor password in and they have various different reports that you can pull and deliver insights in terms of the way that you are trading but one of the most widely known that's also free is my FX book now there are limitations to what you can find out but you can see what instruments you've traded which have earned you the most money what directions earned you the most money average length of hold all of this kind of stuff so if you don't want to splash out just yet for a third-party journaling system my FX book really isn't a bad place to start now moving on to point number two and that is to interpret that data completely objectively. 
So one of the things that I found out was that I was looking at pretty much all the major and minor FX pairs along with a few select indices every single week. Now with that data, I found out three key things that otherwise my ego probably would have chosen to ignore. First of all, over 85% of my profits came from long positions and also from the select indices that I was trading. It also showed that these are a mix between market and limit orders and that they did not account for a very high volume of day trading throughout the week at all. Secondly, I found out of that the other 15% of profits, this was split between about 15 different FX instruments that were through multiple trades each day, each week, and that the average profit achieved on this was consistently under half of the equivalent average profit that I was achieving on the indice trades. And one of the other big things that I found out was that actually over 85% of my losses came from using FX instruments. So this gave me an honest lie of the land. So then came the assessment of my time contribution slash efforts that I'd put into these things. Now there was no exact science to this and obviously it would differ from person to person, but you will probably know how much time broadly you spend over a weekend or each day. I know that I was spending about three to four hours every single Sunday going through all of the major and minor FX pairs, looking for opportunities, alerts, forecasting, and then I just allocate a few minutes at the end to run through my choice indices as I felt that they were a lot more straightforward. And this coupled with time during the week, I found that the bulk of my time was dedicated to monitoring FX positions or FX alerts, and actually the indices took up very little mental capacity. So in essence, I'd now seen it in black and white that I was spending almost all slash a completely disproportionate amount of time on FX pairs that not only was spreading me completely thin, but also it was only to account for 15% of my overall profits, but more importantly, the FX pairs were accounted for over 85% of my losses. And with this in mind, this triggers the next stage of the implementation, and that is listen to the figures and adjust your approach. Now, you can't be precious on this and you need to leave your ego at the door, and I did. From that realization, I literally went cold turkey and cut every single FX pair from my watch list and just focused on the indices that were actually making me the most money. And now my time, 100% of it, not just the 20% that I was using before, is focused on all of the stuff that's actually making me money and not getting diluted by all of the other stuff that's threading me too thin and actually having negative results. And now my time, 100% of it, not just the 20% that it was before, is now focused on the things that I find easiest and that perform the best for me. Okay, so what was really the final result of me doing this? I no longer need to spend three to four hours on a Sunday for very little result. And in my opinion, when you actually look at it, almost turning up just for the sake of it. This time could potentially be better spent either backtesting my existing indices strategy and trying to refine it, or even looking to backtest and implement a new indice into the watch list. But even better, it freed up time so as I didn't need to spend it looking at charts if that's what I wanted. It resulted in my win rate improving dramatically from somewhere around the 35% average mark, then up to the 65 to 70% average mark, and also my risk reward ratios improved dramatically too, with a 2.5 average risk reward going up to now 5.5 average risk reward. But the single best thing that improved and made such a difference for me as a trader was just getting rid of that mind fog that I'd created for myself and all the stress that came with it. Just cutting away the things that didn't work for me and accepting that they didn't work for me was almost like a weight being lifted from my shoulders. My philosophy and initial impression has now just completely turned on its head as a result. No longer am I feeling like I'm missing out on opportunities if I'm not monitoring them. In fact, it's the opposite now. I'm at complete peace with it. I know that by not looking at them, I'm actually freeing up time and I no longer see the FX pairs as an opportunity. I just see them more as a waste of time for very little result for my style of trading and what I saw success with. Essentially, this allowed me to find, capitalize and refine my own trading edge. In reality, my edge, and also probably your edge too, is actually that 20% of efforts that's actually getting you the decent results. The other 80% is where you're completely barking up the wrong tree. Whereas now my full focus is all on the right things and it's not being diluted by all of the other stuff that really wasn't generating anything for me. On reflection, it was more a case of looking busy and trying to do what you thought was right rather than actually being pragmatic about what was working and what wasn't. And as we know, there's a big, big difference between being busy and being productive. So in short, what steps can you take to utilize Pareto's law in your trading? One, gather the data and understand where the profit and losses are coming from. Be it the instrument, the day, the time, the direction, whatever it is that works for you. Two, interpret that data, work out what is working the most and what is working the least. Three, work out the actual time allocation that you're putting into each of these components, i.e. the ones that work and the ones that don't. How much time are you putting in on the stuff that works and how much time are you putting on the stuff that doesn't? And of course, from here, you can understand how much more time you could have working on the stuff that does work. 
And number four, listen to the figures and adjust your approach and leave your ego at the door. Because this is the time when you can actually look at what is in black and white and be able to refine your strategy and refine your trading day to work on things that work best for you. Overall guys, and put simply, do more of what works and less of what doesn't. And on that note, if you have enjoyed this video, then please consider tapping that like button. But if I don't speak to you before, that's it from me. I'll catch you on the next video. Take it easy.